I like to say from one of our favorite characters, constant vigilance. Constant vigilance. <laughs> That's how you roll the pickleball world with an iron fist, constant <laughs> vigilance. All right, so today uh, we've gone over some drill sessions before, but I uh, thought I'd do another one and go over a few of the things that we didn't go over in our last video. Uh, we'll link that one as well if you haven't seen that one yet. This day we're going to focus a little more, I think, on um, patterns and uh, specific shots rather than kind of the general brush up, stay sharp kind of stuff. So these are some specific things that I'm working on currently. So the one thing that we're gonna do that's similar to the last video is what we usually warm up with, just kind of uh, some dinking and, and attacking and defending and countering straight up. Not really so much because we're working on that today, but because I like it as a warm up, gets your body moving. Get the, oh, yes, I got it. it a couple times. But yeah, just, just a little bit of a warm up. So we're gonna do a little bit of this and then we'll go into our, uh, our first actual pattern drill. Let's get into a little bit of our first pattern. So as people have probably uh, noticed, at least some people have, I have been working on a two-hander off the bounce a little bit in the doubles game. So um, we're gonna just have Colin be dinking a little more to this backhand corner. I'm gonna speed up with the two-hander. We usually start with like one or two spots, not all spots at once as, as far as where I'm attacking the ball. So I'm gonna try to be attacking the ball line or into his right hip area off the bounce, and then uh, we'll try to go from there. So it gives Colin a good opportunity to counter well when he kind of knows where the ball is heading generally, and that gives me a good opportunity to try to defend a good counter, which is really important for any follow-up. I like to mix this one in with a uh, some dinking as well, because in the past I've been attacking a lot on the two-hander, but I haven't been dinking as much with the two-hander, so you don't really want your opponent to know that an attack is coming just because you put that second hand on. So I, I think it's important in this drill to definitely mix in some of these where we're actually dinking it with a similar motion and then adding in the attack. A couple of important things I'm trying to keep in mind in this shot, although I'm still learning a lot about it, is uh, first, outside of the ball is really important just so you can control left and right uh, decently. And um, then I think it's important on the follow-up you're kind of expecting a backhand if they're gonna be late on it when you're attacking line at least. So you're looking for that backhand initially with the two because it often comes down at you on the next one. But if it does get a little higher, I like to try to transition to the one in order to get it down a little more. Well, I think that's uh, a good demonstration of one of the things I'm working on right now, the two-hander uh, speed up with a, a follow-up. So yeah, still working on it, but um, feel like it's definitely a very pattern based thing working on kind of the, the different spots you can put it in and then where the common follow-ups are uh, is the biggest thing for me right now but yeah moving on into the next thing this one is more kind of on the reverse side of that is Colin speeding up with his forehand one of his favorite things and me kind of defending both my line and my chicken wing area basically a standard um, attack off the bounce with the forehand from the right side and uh, all the spots I need to be defending. So for this one, what we normally do is I simulate a uh, cross court dink with something like this, and then allow Colin to speed it up. Uh, again, I like to start off with a combination of spots, not, not too many combinations uh, at once, because in that position, you can put it in three or four different spots that are good. But I like to start off with one or two in order to practice more of the motion of things. And then once we're uh, good with the motion, then we'll start putting it in different spots to kind of combine that with uh, actual hand speed and recognition and all the other things we need to be focusing on. But I do like isolating to begin with. So let's start with uh, line first. So I'm gonna give him this ball right here. He hits it line and then I'm hitting kind of a, a counter here. And one other thing I'd say is important when practicing something like this is you don't wanna be hanging out here just doing this. You do wanna combine it with the full movement at least when you're isolating it that you're still about here where you normally would be, and you're combining it with the movement slash lunge. For me, it's usually a lunge, something like this. I don't really like isolating so much that you're not needing to move at the same time as hitting. So movement with the hitting is still very important. On the counter, since I'm only hitting from one spot, I like to try to mix up where my counters are going as far as speed, uh, how down I'm getting it, the line, more of the middle. Um, so there's at least three or four different things I can be practicing on his one attack here. If you wanna make it more difficult for yourself, you can just put the dink a little higher 
something like that. And that gives Colin a, a better ball to attack and makes it more difficult for me even if I'm still in that one spot where I'm counting. This is one I've been working on for a while, so I'd say this one is um, certainly worth going back and, and getting more reps in, but I'd say normally I'm pretty confident with, with this specific one, the two-handed backhand. What I am actually working on right now is a little more of defending multiple spots, so that we'll do that next, where uh, Colin's attacking line, he's attacking my body, my chicken wing, which has a combination of countering with the two, the one, or getting to the forehand, which the differences between those obviously it makes it more hard, more difficult to, uh, to get to all of them. So now we're gonna be able to transition to where Colin can attack wherever he wants as far as left and right goes. Oh, missed the first forehand, but I was on it. So now, yeah, he can attack line, he can attack chicken wing, more towards the middle, which makes it more difficult for me. Yep. Personally, I do think it is great to, uh, to play it out uh, of course, if you hit a counter to where they pop it up, I mean, I don't usually smash the next one, but uh, I do think it's important to, after counter, play out some semblance of a, of a real point and how that would work. Something that makes uh, this drill difficult and I think really worth doing is that normally in most situations when you're getting attacked, you're kind of looking for one thing, meaning you're looking for a backhand counter or a forehand counter or a two-handed or something like that. You kind of need to cover all three of those. So it's often either two-handed backhand stretch or even one-handed when you really need to block it or reach. Uh, the one hander kind of covering the body usually, and this is to get it more down. And then you can kind of cover the chicken wing with forehand here or the backhand here, but usually it's kind of forehand here. And then oftentimes you even need to cover further out, which is middle, uh, which is a full forehand. And it's just, it's difficult to cover all those spots at once. Uh, and that's why I really think this drill is worth doing to where you get used to transitioning from one to the next uh, off of the same type of attack, or at least the same ball that you're giving them where they have multiple spots to go on. <laughs> <laughs> with the uh, with the forehand uh, in this kind of hip area, I do think it's pretty important as far as mechanics and form go that you are comfortable with the paddle being more up here rather than horizontal because this covers the hip area better than this does. Uh, obviously because this paddle is closer to my body and this is further away so you get crunched more easily like this. Um, and with that your elbow needs to be tucked into your side so you can push forward uh, from this position. So that's something I've been kind of working on mentally and is getting used to that kind of motion. Ah, don't be slow. Gates. Ow! That gate's lost. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I like anyone... how we, we just name certain <laughs> shots after people. Just hide it. My gates. <laughs> I would or I'll to... be down here like this. I'll be like, Ashworth. Ashworth. <laughs> I'll be on one knee. Yeah. Or I'll be in if, uh, <sighs> if anyone Cassidy, watched... ninja pose. If Maddie actually puts this in the video, I wonder if anyone will know who that is in the comments. Oh, my gates is still a legend. Still a legend. Turn, hide it behind the belly, flip. Smart, it's a good play. All right, well, I think that concludes this, um, this drill right here. So again, pattern recognition. I think it's great to, to give your partner here kind of an easy ball to attack in multiple different spots and then just get used to responding to those different spots. Uh, this one can certainly be frustrating and uh, <laughs> it's just very difficult to cover everything at once. But you can also make it harder if you're doing well. You can make this one out of the air. I think that makes it even harder. You can certainly hit your dink higher. And if you want to make it easier, again, just isolate spots. Start practicing one or two spots at a time instead of three or four. Uh, and that can certainly make it a lot easier and, and make your form better first. So yeah, that's one of my favorites. Let's, uh, let's move on.